Hey guys, DJ Gunner 258 here, once again bringing you, what do you want to call it, WROL loadout, you can call it my Minuteman kit. Uh, anyway, basically it's just all of my systems rolled together in what is supposed to be the uh, most useful and practical system that I've come, with up, come up with so far. So this is my uh, loadout and all my systems together. So uh, again, I'm always looking for constructive criticism. Be nice in the comments telling me what I can do better. Uh, make me think about things different ways. Hey, what if I need to do this? Uh, be sure to put in your uh, comments and suggestions in the comments. And uh, let's just get straight into this. Okay, guys, uh, starting out with my Jack of All Traits uh, SPR length rifle. This is a uh, system that I came up with based off of, but still different than Nut and Fancy's SPR concept video. So that is my Jack of All Traits rifle. If you want to know all about this rifle, you can go ahead and uh, cl click the annotation somewhere in here, and it will tell you all about uh, this rifle. It's going to be my final full review on this rifle, so please go check that out. Okay, and the first part of that system is the Condor MOPC. So this is in olive drab, of course. So far, it's been an okay plate carrier. Haven't really done more with it than just take it out of, to the range. Haven't been running gunning with it, so I can't really attest to the dur durability of it. But so far, it's been good. Anyway, let's start down here at the bottom of the plate carrier. I'll move the camera a little bit. And you see I have a little uh, clip right here which stays on here at all times and since I want this to be a grab and go Minuteman kit uh, ready uh, whenever I have these gloves attached on here so it's just all in one system and I can just yank the vest on in if I need to run so my gloves are always going to be attached there these are mechanics fast gloves in multicam uh, further up we have the main pouches right here where I have three uh, P mags are actually two P mags. This one is windowed, this one is not, and this is a Troy battle mag. Not too thrilled with the battle mags, but they uh, they work. And uh, I'd say the P mags are better, but uh, battle mags will do you just fine too. Uh, in front of the uh, magazines, uh, I have one extra magazine that came with my Canic TP9 SA, and then in the second pouch. I just have a little Swiss uh, army knife. I would prefer to put a multi-tool in here, but I just want to keep the stuff for my Minuteman slash WRO, WROL kit all in one complete system and leave it like there all the time. Although I do have a uh, Leatherman Wingman, I'm not going to count on that being in this system because this is just going to stay here 24-7. And my third pouch, I don't have anything currently. But I'll probably be fixing that soon, hopefully when I get another Canic TP9 SA mag, when they start selling them. I did look on Century Arms website and they have the Canic TP9 magazine, but not the new SA style floor plate. So, if I could maybe buy those soon, that'd be great. So, <laughs> get on it, Century Arms. Um, let's see, farther up here we have my Canic TP9 SA. Great pistol. I've, oops, let's try and get it out of the holster. But uh, this has been a great, outstanding pistol so far in the testing I've done with it. I've uh, shot it um, a little bit. I, I would say decent, a decent amount. And it's been a great pistol. I have mounted on here my Canic TP9 uh, holster that it came with. Let me get you a better, guys, better view of that. And um, here, I'll get this out of here just so it's a little bit lighter. And hooray for zip ties. As uh, I'm sure anyone who owns the Canic TP9 probably knows, it comes with two types of uh, systems to attach the holster to whatever thing you need it to. There's the belt system, and then there is the uh, paddle system. And this one is the only one... There, there's still no Molly system to attach uh, via Molly, no aftermarket or anything. So I'm going to have to work with zip ties while I can. The only problem with that is you get a substantial amount of wiggle. Of, and though it does wiggle, um, it's not going to go anywhere. So it's always going to be attached to me. It's, I'm not, I can't rip it off. So um, it's going to stay there. It's just going to be flopping in the wind if I run. So that's uh, something that I might want to take suggest. Oop as I kick the tripod, but that's something I might want to take suggestions on if you have any better ideas other than zip ties. 
but I still do want to use this uh, Serpa style holster. I'm a huge fan of the Serpa style holster and I want to be able to use this but I want to be able to attach it securely to uh, a Molly system. Okay, and here is my third part of my chest rig. I have over on my uh, left hand side, since I'm uh, right handed, um, I have on my weak side, I have a um, United Cutlery boot knife. I recently did uh, paint this, the handle olive drab. It might be wearing off a tiny bit right there, but you can always, hey, throw another coat of spray paint on it. No big deal. Even if you don't, hey, scratches build character. So it is situated like this. Uh, on my rig, and I'm surprised I haven't seen more of this. The cool thing that this uh, situation allows you to do is let's say you're going into a building and you have your firearm, it allows you to uh, pull out the knife in a single motion and also slash at the same time in case someone is right up on you, which if you're pulling out a knife, they better be right up on you. If not, you're obviously going to use your firearm. But if they're right up on you, you pull it out pull the knife out in a single motion and you can slash at the same time and then right from there you can go into uh, a couple stabs or something to a more effective way of uh, inflicting damage on who's ever trying to attack you. So that, I really like this situation on my side. I like how this is oriented. Um, I'm really surprised I haven't seen more plate carriers with this type of situation for uh, knives. Um, on the side, I want to get a new sheath for this, but this is uh, my old United Cutlery uh, sheath. It's really crappy, and I ended up cutting like little holes in here and running zip ties through it, and this one's pretty secure, although I want to get a new one. On the back, I just run it slick with an American flag patch. Uh, actually, I don't know why that's on there, but um, yeah, I have that on the back. And that is it for my chest rig. Okay, here is the second part of my system, which is my, again, Condor. Uh, I think it's called a three-day assault pack. I've had this pack for a while, so sometimes I forget. But anyway, this is my assault pack. Um, I'll, first of all, I, how I run this pack is I have it um, just over my shoulders like I would wear it normally if I didn't have a plate carrier on. I don't do anything like weave it through the webbing or anything, just so I can be able to uh, detach it quickly if I need to. I can get, uh, let's say I need to get in a vehicle really quickly, I can just pop a couple buckles and it's off of me. And I don't have to worry about like trying to take my plate carrier, plate carrier off and uh, unweave it if I did weave it into the back of my molly on my plate carrier. So that's how I run that. Uh, on the outside, I have uh, two little pouches, one right there, one right there. This is actually off of like a airsoft belt, but in this side, I have a crap Showtime smoke grenade. Smoke grenade. Um, I'm just gonna say, hey, it's better than nothing. If I don't need it, uh, I don't know. Yeah, it's better than nothing. It it, it works um, unless you get it wet, but. That's something just for marking areas in case I need to. And over here I have a, uh, what is this, a Rayovac uh, little pretty, it's a, it's a very decent flashlight for the money. I think it's like $10 and it's very bright and it has two settings, uh, bright, low, and then off. So that's pretty great. The reason why I keep these situated here is just so I can access them without having to take off my backpack. As you can see here, I can just reach back, pull it out, and access my flashlight. Okay, moving up and in, we have uh, my first pouch right here uh, in which I carry uh, some pins, a little bit of paper, also a uh, some of these little flash uh, little, uh, I don't even know what you call them, strobes. Uh, you can get these around 4th of July. But anyway, if it's nighttime, these can light up an entire area, probably signaling. Uh, I don't, I don't want to call it like a flashbang because that would be completely impractical if you're going to pull out a match and throw this at someone. But it is uh, useful for marking things at night uh, or having your presence be known. Let's say I needed to get found. Uh, these would be great. These are, these are really great at night. Um, Let's see, what else do I have in here? I don't know if I put it in here. It's usually in here, which is kind of concerning considering I never touched this, but it is a little uh, Duracell, I think, like headlamp, 
and it just has uh, white LEDs and red LEDs. The red LEDs are nice because they don't destroy your night vision. Uh, going up here, I have another little uh, clip in case I need to clip something on really quick. I can just have someone do that for me or I can take off my backpack. Up here, I in the uh, probably the most accessible pouch, I have a first aid kit um, and I used to have some uh, uh, compression uh, compression uh, bandaging or whatever you call that. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have that anymore, but I should get some more. But there's my first aid kit. Um, going into the smaller pouch, the smaller main pouch. Uh, open this up. I have uh, some of these cheap uh, Nemesis uh, sunglasses. They're really nice. Um, they're pretty cheap. They have a head strap right there so that they won't fall off your face. I also have a 40 round P mag. Uh, in black and these are I have not had the chance to test this out yet but it looks like it's going to be a great magazine and a good way to carry a lot of uh, ammo uh, by the way all my mags in my plate carrier and this one I do not have full because that can wear out the springs so this one I have t 20 rounds in out of the 40 round mag and the rest of my other 30 round mags I have 10 rounds in stored so just so I don't wear out the springs um, right here I have uh, a random assorted batteries, AA, AAA, I have some chapstick, I have a instant hand warmer, oh and hey there's that energizer, oh it's energizer, but it has the uh, red and uh, white settings for the uh, flashlight. Um, I just have hand warmers, um, also in the bottom of here I should probably be doing better on food but I don't have that much. I just have a uh, MRE Pop-Tart right here. Might be crushed by now, but it's like one of those chocolate chip toaster pastries MRE. So I keep that in there just in case I need a snack. Should probably put some more food in here, but that is something I'll have to do later. Um, going into the main pouch, and my battery might die, so let's try and make this quick. If you see a cut, you'll know why, because my battery died. But this is my main pouch. In my main pouch, I have a Swedish poncho. Or Swedish, I think. I'm pretty sure. Uh, Swiss, po Swiss poncho. Um, in case I need to keep dry, I have a pair of leather work gloves, in case I need them. I have a survival kit type thing. It has a uh, plastic bag, plastic trash bag. I, I have a chem light. Uh, waterproof matches, uh, duct tape, probably not enough of it, an emergency blanket, um, I have uh, dryer lint in here, I'm sorry it's probably hard to see because of the glare, I have so many lights, but I have dryer lint in case uh, I need uh, a good fire starter, and almost a joke of a knife right there, just like a tiny little cutting surface I would call. So that's just in case I get in a really sticky situation. Uh, Alright here I have toilet paper, that's for things. Um, and I have a bunch of different assorted paracord. Probably not enough, again, but this is as much stuff I can fit in this tiny little pack. Um, right here on the inside, let's take this out. On the inside, you have one more little pouch right here. And if I unzip that, you will see that I have some emergency stuff in case I need to get found, like those uh, little uh, signal flares. I cannot knock the tripod. I have a uh, orange vest right here, and then I also have a signaling mirror and uh, some orange paracord in case I need that. So that's what I have in there, and that is uh, pretty much it for my um, my uh, three-day assault pack. Uh, there's a little uh, Alice pouch right here that I have. I'll move this up. I have that little Alice patch, or I have this little Alice pouch, which is actually not very good quality, but I don't have any anything in it currently. Uh, I used to have a compass, and it was again situated so I can reach it from the outside. I just pull down on this pouch, and then it would drop out, and I could get it. But uh, right now, I don't currently have anything in there. But yeah, if you guys have any um, uh, suggestions of how I can improve my kit. Oh, before I uh, forget and everyone screams at me water, uh, I have a uh, camelback that I will put in this pouch right here for the camelback. So that's uh, my water covered. I know it's probably not enough again, 
but it's some water. And then also right here I have uh, some quick uh, paracord. Uh, it's, a, it's in a really cool wrapping method that all I have to do is pull this out and pull down on this uh, one strap and this all comes unraveled. And it's a very nice way to have some quick accessible paracord. I would recommend doing that with a lot of stuff, especially like a little strap on your pack. It's definitely very doable to get some quick paracord. Anyway, this video is getting way too long, but um, I will see you later. I mean, I guess uh, if you have any more suggestions of what I can do, um, just let me go in the comments and I'll see you guys later.